fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty hi yo silver, the Lone Ranger. The masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early days of the western United States. The local sheriffs and even federal officers learned to depend on his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness. No greater champion of justice can be found in the pages of history. Return with us now to those thrilling days when the West was young. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. We're heading for Redwood. There's going to be trouble. I know Silver. Away! While one of his men watched him with a grin on his face, Purvis, the owner of a small and scrubby cattle outfit near the town of Redwood, paced the floor of his two-room shack. Finally, he paused to stare out of the window and... <laughs> Won't see anything out there to help you, boss. Dude, all going dark anyway. Max, you've got to do this for me. Uh-huh. Most of your dirty work, sure. But killings are might out of my line. I ought to give you your time and send you packing. Yeah? With all I could tell about you, if I so minded, I reckon you won't. Ah, you... Nobody cut off your trigger finger, did they? You want the kid dry gulch, do it yourself. That don't sound so good, huh? I didn't think it would. You always was a right careful, hombre. Quit acting like a smart I and do some thinking. Why, shucks, boss. You're just paying me because I got a strong back. You're the gent that's the thinking around here. Then shut up and let me. Sure. Sure, go right ahead. Yeah. What am I going to tell Scar when he gets here? Tell him. What can you? Just tell him the truth. You sold them beeves, all right. Then found out that stud poker weren't your game. But I've got to be able to pay him. Looks like you can't. Hey, he'll kill me. He's likely to do most anything. Well, there ought to be a moral in that somewhere. Huh? Either quit playing poker oh, or quit selling stolen cows for rustlers. From what I've seen of Scar and his pards, when they deliver beef to you to sell and you sell it, why, well, they kind of hanker to get their share. Why, that upsets them something awful when they find out a fellow they trusted gambled their cash away. You fool. Don't this mean nothing to you at all? It ain't my idol getting nailed to the wall. It's yours. I tell you that... And for the matter of that, you've got a way out. You're just too yellow to take it. I ain't standing for much more of your lip, Max. I ain't worried. And if it was me that had been related to old man Jackson and all that stood between me and that ranch ahead was a punk kid, I'd do something about it. I wouldn't waste time grouching about what a tight spot I was in. You'd do plenty. Well, it's a lead pipe since you won't. Just the same. Yeah? If I could just show Scar the Diamond J was going to be mine... You could stall him, eh? Sure. What's his kid's name? You said it's Jackson's nephew? Tim Perry. You and Jackson sure weren't close kin, were you? Uh-uh. Goes way back. Guess he'd even forgot we was. <laughs> you can't blame him for not wanting to recollect it, can you? You're too doggone funny. Uh, just a second. 
You sure with this Perry fella out of the way, you'd be next to kin? Ain't there nobody else comes before you? There ain't. I had it looked up. Well, I don't know what you're waiting for. Drill the gent. Or ain't he showed up to take the place over yet? The Diamond J. Straw boss says he'll get here tomorrow. And then? I don't know. If anything went wrong... You'd hang. Yeah. But that's just in case you found out. On the other hand, you know what Scar's going to find out. And if it was me, between him and the law, I'd let the law get after me any day. I know, but just... Wait a minute. There's someone run up the steps. Wait. Wait, listen. Don't draw. I won't harm you. You gotta hide me. What in places you... Listen, I tell you... Where's Thunder are you? Where'd you come from? I ain't got time. They'll be here. I'll tell you afterwards. Hide me first. Who's they? The law? No, it ain't the law. A masked man, a redskin. Why are you doggone injured? What made you... Hold it, Max. Stranger, where's your horse? He got fagged. I had a ditch him and put it. Ain't outside, huh? No. Them fellas see you come in here? They couldn't have. They'll stop to find out. I know they will. Look, mister, you gonna let me hide, or ain't you? If you ain't, I'll have to hide tail. I'll go out there. That's him now. Quick. Get under that heap of gear and blankets in the corner there. Oh, yeah. Hurry, cover yourself up. Boss, what do you think you're doing? Shut up. I'm not... Rich! You can't come in here. Come on, fella. Uh, Just a second. What do you figure you're up to? We're searching this place for a man who may have come in here. We've no time to waste getting your permission. Now, to see who's in the next room there. Uh-huh. How to do it? Nobody's there. We'll find that out for ourselves. Just two rooms of this shack, huh? You ain't blind. Empty, Tonto? Uh, Have a look at those bunks. Huh? Let me look. Stranger, just who do you and the engine think you're after? Flash Norris. What's that? You heard me. There's a reward of $1,000 on his head. When we find him, he goes to the law. I get it. Reward hunters, huh? No, but you wouldn't understand that. I see. Quiet. Were... Well, Kimasabi? No. Him not here. And he must have cut over to all those arroyos. Come, we'll pick up his trail yet. Uh-huh. When you leave here, just keep traveling, mister. Next time we meet, I'll be ready for you. Good. Hey, that first for eight. And then they're gone. I wonder if you shut off your mouth enough. Now you can keep still for a while. Uh, the coast is clear, Flash. You can come out. You sure they're gone? Just rode off. Come here. Gosh, fellas. You know how much I'm appreciating this. <laughs> Grateful, huh? Well, if I'd been caught... Sure. They'd... I know what's waiting for you once the law has you. We ain't never met before. But I've heard of you plenty. Yeah? Got that handle of yours from being a mite too quick with your hardware, didn't you? Well, oh, uh... shucks, I know the whole story. Well, Flash, if you're grateful like you say, you're going to get the chance to prove it. Hmm? But if you decide you ain't, what? Maybe me and Max here will be collecting that $1,000 reward. <laughs> <laughs> following day, the new owner of the Diamond J, Tim Perry, a young man in his early 20s, arrived in Redwood by stage. He was met by the Diamond J's foreman and driven out to the ranch. After the evening meal, the two men seated themselves on the steps of the rear porch and... Well, young fellow, how do you think you're going to like it here? Hey, I'm going to like this fun. No, you'll travel quite a spell before you'll find a better outfit than this one is. I ain't seen nothing anywhere that compares with it. Nope, and the little you seen today ain't a speck on the whole of it. Your uncle was mighty proud of this place, Tim. It was the only thing he ever lived for. You worked for him long? Since the first year we come here. I've been range boss for the past 15. You'll stay on and work for me, won't you? Why, sure, if you want it. I do. Well, then we'll call that settled, then. <laughs> I got to admit, I've been wondering what would happen when you took over. I want things to go on just like they did when Uncle Frank was alive. To be able to show me around tomorrow? Over the whole place? Yeah. <laughs> Son, you aim to see it all? Well, it'll take us the best part of a week. Is that much land? Now, look to the west there. Can you still make out them hills? Uh Uh-huh. Well, your range goes up to them and beyond. To the north, it runs clear to the Sweetwater, and to the south, as far as Mustang Canyon. All that stops you on the east is town. Why, Why, I'm rich. (laughs) You sure are. Gosh, coming from a Kansas homestead to something like this, I I just don't know what to make of it. Well, now, son, you listen to me. Huh? You've got plenty to feel pleased about. A fine range and a heap of it. Best beef feeding on it in the state. Mostly new buildings here and a doggone good saddle string. And a crew of hands set their second to none. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. But like everything else, there's got to be something to keep it from being too good to be true. Yeah? 
Well, what's that? Your kin here. Huh? Kin? I didn't know there was any. Oh, you have, all right. Fella name of Purvis, other side of town. Guess he had a grandma, was third cousin to a second cousin of your uncle's or something like that. Anyhow, he's kin to you. Oh, but that ain't the half of it. No? He's mostly skunk. Crooked, too, I'll bet, if it could be proved on him. Anyhow, there's got to be something wrong with a fella that would let an outfit run down the way he's let his and... He don't sound like nobody I care much to know. He won't, but here's the point. If you hadn't inherited this ranch, he would have. Oh. And it could still be his, if so be it, something happened to you. You ain't never made out a will, have you? Me? Gosh, no. Oh, most young fellas don't. Got the fool notion they're going to live forever. Well, you take my advice and don't put it off no longer. Don't want to frighten you none, but till you've done it, Purvis is likely to have ideas. I reckon you savvy. You're, you're trying to tell me he might have me killed? Yes, so. Oh, but why he would he... Oh, I'm your friend. There's no need to slap leather. Why, you're masked. Oh, crook. No. <laughs> Just this? listen to what I have to say. It'll take only a moment. You're not the only one who's thought of the possibility of Purvis attempting Tim's life. Who in blazes are you? That doesn't matter. Remember just this. Tim is safe, and Purvis has just about reached the end of his string. Huh? Later, you'll know what I meant. Here, Silver. That horse. Look at that horse. Golly. In the meantime, don't worry. But listen, I... Come on, old fellow. Hurry, Silver. Hurry. Silver. I don't savvy. What do you want? Who is he? I didn't savvy at first myself, young fellow. Huh? But now I reckon I do. The Lone Ranger halted his great stallion at the hidden camp where Tonto awaited him. Oh, oh, there, Silver. Oh, 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 there. Oh. I think the game's in our hands, Tonto. Mm, that good. I spoke to Tim Perry and his foreman. Ah. Uh-huh. I doubt it'll take that foreman long to realize who I am. Ah. Uh-huh. He'll tell Tim. When Tim sees me again, he'll know me. That's all I wanted. Mm, that keep good. We're going to kill two birds with one stone this time, Kimosabe. Ah. Uh-huh. Scar and Purvis, and we won't have long to wait. <laughs> Still later that night that a single horseman dismounted at the rear of Purvis's shack. He moved toward the back door and then rapped lightly three times. Is that you, Scar? Who would you think it was? Open up. Just a second. Come in. Hurry. Hey, who's this gent? Flash Norris. You've heard of him. Oh, Flash, this is Scar. Howdy. Howdy. Uh, Purvis, give me the cash. Can't stay long this time. I have to get back. Oh, shucks. Ain't no real big hurry, are you? I am. Oh, sit down for a spell. Here. Yeah, sit down here. Can't. Just give me the cash. Oh, well, anyhow, you'll stop long enough for a drink, won't you? Flash, get down that jug off the top shelf there. Scarred like Leave a drink. Leave that blasted jug where it is. Purvis, what in thunder's wrong with you? Hmm? Wrong? With me? You're acting as fidgety as a hound with fleas. Just get that cash... Hey. Huh? Have you got that cash? Hey. Uh, well, that is... You ain't, Scar. Now, listen. Me and the boys got over 10,000 coming. Where is it? Uh, Scar, you'll get the cash. Just wait a second, won't you? Purvis, I... did you lose our cash along with your own when you was gambling? Who told you I'd been playing cards? How'd you know that? <laughs> I ain't trusting you as far as I could throw a post hole. You watched all the time. Scar, I lost, but... But you can't pay, well, huh? Not right now, You but... skunk. Oh, wait. You know what I said would happen to you the first time you ever crossed me? Now, listen, well, Scar, happening now. now. Scar! Drop that gun. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. Scar, the cold at his side, half drawn from his holster, found himself staring into the muzzle of a forty-five, held by Flash Norris. You, Wick! Drop it back where it belongs. <laughs> Have to do your bosses fighting for him, eh? That's my business. Just don't reach for that gun again while I'm around. Thanks, Flash. I, I won't be forgetting this. <laughs> That's all right. You helped me out earlier tonight. Now, why don't you two fellas get together and straighten this out? You're supposed to be partners, ain't you? Well, act like you was. Purvis, just because this hombre got the drop on me don't mean you're getting out of paying what you owe me and the boys. You'll get it, Scar. Honest, you will. You just didn't give me time to explain. Well, I'm giving you time now. Shoot. You recollect me telling you about the Diamond J, don't you? About that kid getting it instead of you? Uh-huh. Yeah, I recollect. What about it? Oh, Flash here is going to do a job for me. Ain't that right, Flash? Said I would, didn't I? You see, Scar? I won't till you tell me what this is all about. He's going to get rid of the kid for me. Then the ranch will be mine. I'll be able to pay you easy. This here effect? You'll get what's coming to you. You're going to drill the Kansas homesteader? In my own time and in my own way. That's something you'll have to leave to me. Killing's my business. You want to see results, drop back in a couple of days. <laughs> So you finally got somebody to do your gun work for you, huh, Purvis? Don't that sound all right? You worried about your cash now? If the Diamond J is going to be yours, I reckon you'll be good for a hundred times what you owe. So we'll leave that lay for a while. Something else more important on hand now, anyhow. Yeah? We're all set for the big drive. You mean... It's a cleanup. We've gathered in every cow wearing a brand that can be changed to yours. The boys are bringing them through the hills in two herds now. When they get here? Four or five days. Two herds? You must have stole plenty. Said it was a cleanup, didn't I? Is that a reason I'm clearing out? But you don't have to worry. They're already wearing your brand. You got a buyer waiting to take delivery. All you got to do is put your John Henry to the bill of sale, collect the cash, and hand it over for the divvy. Uh huh. And this time, no gambling with cash that ain't yours, savvy? I reckon I learned my lesson. Good enough. And that's settled. Anything else you want to know before I leave? Well, I. Uh... Yeah? I was just thinking. A deal like this is going to be mighty hard to make look straight. There's likely to be questions asked. For you, it's all right. You can hightail. But I got to stay. <laughs> Quit your worrying. Said you was going to get the Diamond J, didn't you? Yeah, but just as you say... own that, you'll be the biggest hombre around these parts. Won't the law or anybody else go out of its way to bother you? Adios. Flash. Yeah? The sooner you drill that kid, the better pleased I'm going to be. I'm making my plans. But when are you going through with them? And the way it looks now, huh? I'd say in about uh, four days. During the next four days, the Lone Ranger and Tonto stayed close to their camp, which gave them a clear view of a distant rocky shelf halfway up a cliff. It was on the night of the fourth day that the Lone Ranger suddenly jumped to his feet and... Look there, Tonto. Look toward the cliff. Ah, you see him. The signal fire. Ah. Now waiting's over. Now's the time for action. Call, Scout. Ah. Here, Scout. Here, Silver. You ride, too? Yes, but on a different errand, Kimosabe. Ah. You carry out the plan we arranged before. Ah. How to do it? I'm calling on Tim Perry. Ah. Now on your way, Tonto. Get him up, Scout. Get him up. All right, Silver, old fellow. <laughs> tense expectancy in the shack belonging to Purvis. Not only was the rancher looking forward to the arrival of the stolen cattle, but he and Max were also waiting for the return of Flash Norris. Max, how long has that fella been gone? Huh? Now, let me see. Six hours about. Yeah, that'd be just about it. Six hours? Well, gosh, how long do you figure he ought to take? It's anyhow a couple hours ride at the Diamond J, just one way. You want him back in 30 minutes or so? How do we know he ain't skipped? We don't. We saved him from that masked fella. But that's all he wanted. Bet anything you want to name, he's on his way for the border this very minute. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Honest, boss, you can worry worse than a woman. 
Of course we don't know that he ain't skipped out. For God's sakes, use your head. If he wanted to skip, there wasn't nothing keeping him from doing it before now, was there? Ah, uh, you... Ah, uh, you're just barring trouble. Sit down and pour yourself a drink. I'll fix that fella. Huh? You think I won't? Just wait and see. See, if you talk to yourself into believing he's done you dirt some way... You don't know that he ain't. I guess you're the limit. I... Well, what are you two gents looking at me like I was some kind of a freak for? Did you get the kid? Yeah. Sure. I never missed. Well, now, doggone it, boss, maybe we'll get some peace around here. You won't. Huh? How do we know he ain't lying to us? How do we know whether he drilled the kid or not? You're saddling up and riding to town. Now, look, You boss. stay there till you find out if the kid's alive or dead. If he's killed... It won't take long for the news to get around. But Purvis... Then get back and let me know. Max was gone only a few hours. When he returned to the shack, he... Boss! Flash told you the truth. He done it. The news is all over town. Maybe next time you won't doubt me. They, they don't suspicion nothing. Uh, about you being behind it? Yeah. Well, they know you never fired the shot that done it because they know you well enough to savvy you wouldn't have the nerve. Answer my question. Well, of course they suspicion you. Why wouldn't they? But they ain't got no proof or nothing that points your way. So you can sit back and take a deep breath. Uh-huh. Flash. What's that there? Hmm? There, behind you, by the window. Don't see anything. That'll do. Hoist your hands. What the... And don't come a step closer unless you want to get shot. Boss, now what in thunder are you up to? This fella's a wanted crook. I... There's a thousand dollars reward on his head if he's delivered to the law alive. You mean to say you... I'm collecting. Well, of all the dirty, double-crossing polecats I ever heard tell of, you take the prize. Who ask your opinion? A thousand dollars is a thousand dollars, ain't it? Ain't you overlooking something, Purvis? What? I could tell the law you put me up to drilling the kid. <laughs> and confess to murder? I reckon not. You wouldn't get a trial in these parts, mister. There'd be a mob ready and willing to tear you to pieces. <laughs> nope. I'm collecting that thousand. And you're keeping your mouth shut. <laughs> It was almost midnight when Purvis and Max entered town with Flash North securely tied to the pommel of his saddle. They drew rein before the office of the sheriff. Oh, oh, oh there. Oh, 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 oh. All right, Max. Help me get this fella out of the saddle and onto his feet. Yeah. Sorry, Flash. Reckon you savvy it ain't me that's double cross you. It's the boss. I just work for him. Save the talk. Oh, sure. Down with you. You able to walk? I'll make out. Come on, let's get him inside. I want to put in my claim for that reward before anything can go wrong. Only one thing could go wrong that I know of. What is it? <laughs> you might forget and double-cross yourself. One of these days... Ah, I'll... shut up and go on in. Where's the sheriff? What do you want him for? Got a prisoner here for him, that's what. A crook with a price on his head. Now get the sheriff and get him pronto. Mm-hmm. He's just out back. Now, sheriff... Hey, Sheriff. Purvis is here with the fellow to turn over to the law. And collect on. Yeah, uh, sure. You wouldn't forget that. Oh, evening. Where's this prisoner you said you... Leaping catfish. Greg Davis. What in thunder they got you tied up for? Better ask them, Sheriff. What'd you call this fella? Why, Davis? I don't know what a... name you call him, but he's Flash Norris. There's a price on his head. He's who? Flash Norris. Why, you doggone fool. This fella's United States Marshal. Oh, what? Untie my hands, will you, Sheriff? Why, you bet. Then put both these men under arrest. Hey, wait. No, you can't. There's something wrong. There's a mistake here. You bet there is, you sniveling fool, and we made it. But don't charge him with rustling and attempted murder. You can't do that. I think, uh, find out more later. No, no, wait, hold on. Sheriff, this fella killed young Tim Perry over to the Diamond J. 
I don't care whether he's a lawman or not. He's a killer. I can prove it. Oh. Why? Why, by the... Tim Perry. Sure, Purvis. And alive and kicking, thanks to the masked man and the marshal here. Which is more than you'll be in a few short days, Purvis. But what? In How case you're you... wondering, Purvis, all this was part of the scheme of that masked man you saw the night you met me. He figured as long as you thought I'd do your killing for you, you wouldn't be tempted to try it yourself. We spread that story about Tim being drilled just to fall in with the scheme. Boss, they got you tied up tighter than a ball of yarn. It's a blasted trick. <laughs> yeah, but it worked. You've poisoned the scenery around these parts long enough, Purvis. I reckon it's just about time there was a house cleaning. What's that? Look there. Texas Rangers, a dozen of them. What are they doing here? There's the masked man and that redskin. Hey, look at the fellas they brung with him. Scar's men. And here comes that masked jet with Scar herself. Get in there. Scar. Don't you show me out, Purvis. Did you get them Texas Rangers and this masked fellow to lay for us when we showed up with the cattle? I never told nobody. And who did? There's the jet right there. The one you thought was Flash Norris. United States Marshal Davis. A lawman? Right. We'd heard rumors for months that you were planning one big cleanup, Scar. That's why we planted Davis with Purvis, convincing him Davis was a crook. We had to know your plan so that we could be prepared. And the law made the biggest cleanup these parts ever seen. This is your fault, Purvis. You wouldn't let them fellas take Blast you in. Blast your with... heights, Scar. How's it any more my fault than yours? You met this fellow calling himself Flash, didn't you? If you're so doggone smart, why didn't you see what he was up to? I thought hold he was... it, Jens, hold it. But that idiot said that... you was at fault, and you claim he was. He was as much as me. Nope. If you really want to blame somebody, put the blame where it belongs. Huh? On that hombre just went outside. Who? On the Lone Ranger. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.